It's a pleasure to bring this webinar to you. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, to listen in and get a glimpse of how two districts in San Bernardino County are providing online instruction to English learners. My name is Angelica Hurtado and I'm a program manager for San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools. And I'm also joined by my team member who will introduce herself now. Good morning, I'm Rosemary Hyder. I'm curriculum coordinator with Angelica. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. We also, we also have our educational um, technology partner here in the background. Sonal, you wanna say hi? Oh, hi everyone, I'm Sonal Patel. Nice to be here this morning, thank you. Okay, so we want to make sure that we honor your time and we want to be efficient during today's webinar. So we're gonna be sharing some webinar norms with you to make sure that we're efficient today. So make sure that if you are not speaking to mute your mic, make sure that that's on, on, on mute. And then also make sure that you use the chat feature to communicate with others. Um, Rosemary will be uh, looking at the chat, um, monitoring it and calling out any anything that we need to uh, share with the entire group. Um, so make sure that you use your name and your district as a starting point in the chat and you have that, that example there for you. And then also re reminding ourselves of meeting etiquette. And so far we've seen great, great things with our meeting, meeting etiquette. So thank you for, for, um, for this. Moving right along in today's uh, purpose for the, the purpose for today's webinar. So one of the things that we want to do today is offer LEAs across the state different options on how to provide virtual instruction to English learners. And keep in mind that this webinar, we made sure to include the preschool uh, setting and the preschool glance um, all the way up to high school. So we're very excited to host our two districts today, which takes us takes me to the next bullet. Uh, we will also wanna show you how two districts are sharing and providing virtual instruction to English learners during the school closure. So this is our agenda. Um, you're gonna see that we're gonna start with our preschool. We're gonna um, work our way up all the way to our high school district. So looking forward to that. But we, before we get started, we wanna check in with you. We wanna hear from you. And so if you mm -hmm. can please join us uh, by entering your response in the chat box to the following question. So as you are providing virtual mm -hmm. instruction during this time, what is something that you think has worked for you so far? Because school closures, they've been, we're probably in our ninth week now. So what has worked for you, your students, teachers, or parents? So feel free to start entering your response in the chat. And then we'll hear as Rosemary monitors, we'll see your responses. Give a few seconds to do that. And as we're waiting, we just want to let everyone know that the, this is being recorded. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Sonal, too. <laughs> doing rosemary not seeing the chats right now but they're coming in a uh, constant communication okay. opportunity for students they're coming in fast <laughs> very good and i and i like that our participants are also able to see the chat as well yes <laughs> Do you want to name one or two, Rosemary, maybe that stand out? Uh, the weekly meetings, Adriana just popped up right now. The weekly personalized videos for students. Uh, Very nice. Communication with parents and students on a daily basis. That's important, totally. The tutorials. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for participating. Move right along. So uh, at this time, I, I, it's really an honor to introduce our, our wonderful presenters for today. 
Um, first, uh, we will hear from San Bernardino City Unified School District's Child Development Programs Team. Uh, we're gonna hear from Nancy Carrillo, who's a program specialist, and also from Alexis Lopez, who is a preschool teacher. Following our preschool team, you're gonna hear from Ms. Anna Applegate, who's the director in San Bernardino City Unified School District and she uh, in the multilingual programs department. After Ms. Anna Applegate, you will also hear from the wonderful team from Chafee Joint Union High School District, led by Mr. Martin Alvarado, who's director of categorical programs, Monica Solis, who's the EL and literacy instructional coach, and Dr. Marian Segovia, who's an assistant principal and also a former teacher and EL advisor. So at this time, I would invite our preschool to get started. Take it away. Hi, thank you, Angel Angelica. Let me share my screen here. All right. Oops. There we go. Can you see it all? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to start off. I am Alexis Lopez. I'm a preschool teacher for San Bernardino. I'm with my program specialist, Nancy, and um, we work for the child development program. Here is a link to our website, which is um, personalized to our district. It was made by Nancy. And so it has a bunch of resources and links for us um, whenever you guys are available to get in there and click on that. I'm going to start with our quarantine schedule. So this is just a suggested schedule that I made for our parents to follow during, um, you know, our shutdown of the schools. This is my personal one, and it was just a daily schedule. I didn't want to overwhelm our parents by giving them a specific time to do activities and make them feel real structured. So I just gave them um, more of like a, the number of minutes that I suggested them for do, to do to certain things. So for circle time, um, I suggested 20 minutes. They should be reading about 10 to 15 minutes daily. Any writing or activities that I, um, that I submit to them should take no more than 15 minutes. And then outdoor play and indoor play is very important for us. So we put at least 30 minutes outdoor and at least 20 minutes indoor. I also had my bilingual instructional aid um, convert this into a Spanish um, document. So it was able for both of our parents to see for all parents to um, get this information. Good morning, this is Nancy. Okay, so what we did here is um, we were really encouraged to get our parents involved and engaged in our um, learning. So we'll start with Class Dojo. Class Dojo is our distant learning program that we are using with all of our preschoolers. Class Dojo is free to all parents and teachers. And not only that, but it translates all the messages into 30 different languages. So if we write in English, the parent will be able to go into Class Dojo and translate it into their own language. Um, this also brings a positive culture. Teachers can encourage students for any skills or values. And this is a great opportunity to share moments with parents, to get the parents engaged by sharing photos and videos, especially from their cultures and in their own language. And our next one is Frog Street. Frog Street is the curriculum that we're using. It is a continuum curriculum from birth to five. Frog Street has been very generous with us. They have given us free parental portals. So all the parents have access to all of their books, which are in English and in Spanish. So that has been a lifesaver for a lot of us since a lot of uh, the teachers uh, did not take any supplies home. So we're able to utilize their books, their curriculum, and they have made this an opportunity for our, for our um, parents to log on as well. And lastly, 
the way we engage our parents lastly is by communication. Um, we just feel that it's important, especially with our age group, to communicate on a weekly basis. Um, with Class Dojo, we are, the teachers are communicating daily. They're providing support for the parents. Um, they are also providing SEAL opportunities, which is our dual language program, where they will send home assignments, activities for the children to participate in. We are also doing Zoom and Meets for our preschoolers, so we will be showing you a clip of that where we can have some intimate one-on-one uh, -on -one time with the students, and those are done weekly. We are also making phone calls to all of our families to keep uh, in communication with them. So all of our child development staff, including our directors, our clerks, our teachers, our aides, are calling the parents just to check in, offer resources, and offer support. And we are also calling them monthly just to be sure that nothing has changed, and if they should need us, that we want them to know that we're there for them. Perfect. Okay, so jumping straight into SEAL. SEAL is a, re, um, a research-based module that was designed to provide high-quality education to all English learners starting in preschool through elementary school. Um, it's to prevent the development of long-term English learners. So we provide professional development, curriculum support, and technical assistance to school systems, which bolsters learning for all children, but is especially critical for our English learners. So going into setup, I wanted to give a little demonstration of my classroom that I have here at home. It is not ideal. I don't have the most space available to me. So as you can see, I've kind of taken over my son's bedroom and you see his TV, you see his dresser, you know, on the left hand side. And we're just, I use what I have. My posters are, are posted on his closet doors. So it's just not ideal, but I'm using what we have and working with it. This is my draw towel label, which I normally do in the classroom on a really big, um, like a bulletin, I mean, a butcher paper. So it's really large, the kids can see it. I had a downgrade here at home. So I'm using just a regular size copy um, paper and drawing it out and being able to still show these examples around where and take them off, show them close to the the screen so the, the children can see them and then posting it back so they have that reminder of them. I also do it in Spanish. So the first one was a firefighter. This one is a sanitation worker. And as you can see on the pictures, I use just a little post-it note, cut it up to size and post the vocabulary terms in Spanish as well so they can see those. Going into my living document, this is something that we started at the beginning of the theme where I asked what a community was. We explained what a community helper was. And you can see in the blue writing that everything I write in English, I also write in Spanish. And I stay very consistent with that blue marker so that it follows all the way through the theme. And any blue writing will be our Spanish terms. So with a living document, I'm able to add things to the what the students suggest, what we learn throughout the theme, and keep it going so that it's consistently ongoing. It doesn't ever stop until we're done with our theme. And finally, it's my graph. This has become a living document as well because as we're learning different community helpers, I add them to the bottom. And like this week, we learned about the mail carrier. So we'll add this on here when we have our weekly Zoom meeting will rearrange and the students will be able to vote again and see who their favorite community helper is. And it's not always the same one. So we can switch from doctor, firefighter, police officer, and they have their chance to stay engaged with the theme and express how they're feeling along the way. And lastly, what we're doing for distant learning um, we've provided some videos for you just to show you because, like I said, we're working with our youngest population. So here are some additional uh, ideas that we're using for distant learning. We'll start with literacy.
So what you see here is one of our recreational aides. What she's doing is she is in her home practicing social distancing and she is reading to the children, um, which provides so much support for the kids because they have these personal connections with the aides. So seeing the aide and hearing familiar stories just brings a lot of joy to our students. And um, unfortunately, the volume is not the best quality, but um, Ms. Lulu here is reading to them in Spanish. Um, she's very animated. She demonstrates on the book. She's making different sounds just to keep the children engaged and um, to keep them um, just involved in learning. Our next our next one is a self-help skill. In our preschool classroom, it's so important for us to um, provide these opportunities for the students. And here you see Mr. Luis, who is demonstrating how to wash your hands. This again is one of our bilingual aides. He is translating everything into Spanish for our students and giving a small demonstration of how to wash hands. This is absolutely important in our preschool classrooms because as we all know, you know, we have four-year-olds, three-year-olds, and um, it's just important to teach them these self-help skills and in their home language as well. So again, they're seeing a familiar face and they're being familiarized with the with all these different techniques. Our next one, I believe, is team teaching. Team teaching here, we have two teachers. One is a teacher, one is an aide. They're both in their own home. So again, practicing social distancing, allowing the kids to see their teacher and their aide. They're talking about letters. And Mr. Uh, Andrew here is talking in English about what the letter C stands for. And Ms. Irma on the other side is demonstrating that in Spanish as well. We're trying to be sure that all children are engaged in learning, learning in their home languages. And uh, just again, I just can't emphasize enough just being able to see their teacher at this young age our students truly, truly have a connection with um, with their teachers. So being animated, having fun, it's just really important in our age group. And um, again, everything is translated from English to Spanish. So what, that way we can um, get in touch with all of our children. And not only that, but these are posted on Class Dojo. So the parent can go back to them several times over. It's not just a one shot deal. They can go back and say, hey, why don't you watch the letter C with Mr. Andrew and Miss Irma? And the child can sit with their own tablets on the, um, on the couch and be able to utilize this at their own pace. And I believe our last one here is our large groups. So yes, we do large groups with preschool and it's amazing. And I am so sorry you can't hear this um, volume, but that is Miss Alexis teaching to about eight of her students. So what she's doing is she's teaching a SEAL lesson here and she's asking the students which is their favorite community worker. And we have one of her students who is bilingual and Mr. Luis is translating everything for her, asking um, her what her favorite um, community worker is. And um, the parent got engaged and got involved in this conversation here. And it was just a really, really neat opportunity. The students, um, because of this filming, we weren't able to show all of their faces, but usually they can see each other, which is a great social and emotional skill for them. They're able to see their friends and engage and interact over the internet. So these are our distant learning ideas. And, um, we're always growing, we're always learning, and our teachers are just amazing. So if you have any questions or would like more information, that is our website there. You can contact us through there. We'd be happy to, um, to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay, well, we transition to our next presenter. Great, great job, preschool. We want to mention some of the great um, comments here for preschool. Uh, from um, I believe it was a main uh, great great way to include all staff. Um, you're really getting a lot of kudos. You're liking this stuff. All great way to use both languages. Okay, let me know when you're ready, Miss Applegate.
anything else you see? I just wanted to make sure that I was unmuted, but I see that I am. So, okay, let me go back to the. Okay, so now we're hearing from our K through eight level before we go to the high school from Miss Anna Applegate. Okay, and I just want to double check that you can see the PowerPoint. Are you able to see it? It's not not yet. Okay, let me see. Make sure. Any other comments, Rosemary, that you see are worth highlighting for everybody in terms of the responses? Just a lot of praises. Uh, Sonal's been doing a good job of responding to the chat regarding the technology as well as okay. when, when um, next year or so when uh, they're not offering it for free, what can we do? Uh, Anna, we can see your screen now. Okay, perfect. All right, well, good afternoon, almost, I guess. Um, and I'm going to give a, a little overview of how San Bernardino City approached uh, distance learning, because it's all of you. I'm sure we were all pretty much caught in the middle of this pandemic. So I'm going to go over just a little bit what our district demographics are. As you can see, we're about 53,000 students. And of those, um, a little bit over 12,000 at any given time are English learners um, with several different languages, I'm sure, as you have as well. So just to put context to that, with 72 schools. So basically, we broke up into five different groups across all divisions. Some directors led this work as we approached the work um, for distance learning. And the five groups consisted of a professional learning team, a scope and sequence curriculum and um, differentiation team, a grading assessment student feedback, devices, and high school seniors. So each one of these groups had a specific task to approach, because as you know, everything that came out of um, COVID was very complicated all from how are we gonna train our teachers? So our first group, the professional learning group, um, was responsible for training over 2,500 teachers on Google Classroom, which is our platform. And you're gonna see in a minute um, some of the resources that they were trained in. So there were continual trainings for teachers to get them into a Google Classroom and gave them some confidence there. The second group, which actually I was the head of the second group, the scope and sequence group, we were very lucky in that our elementary and secondary departments were very progressive. And we had some very, very well um, developed scope, scope and sequences and curriculum guides that teachers followed already. They've been following for several years. So my task was to add digital resources to those scope and sequences so that teachers had everything at their fingertips. We wanted to make sure that, that they, we know many teachers have their own children at home. So we wanted to be able to give them everything um, readily available so they wouldn't have to be searching everywhere on the internet for everything. And so that group um, took care of that. It, we also laid out exactly what teachers' responsibilities were. And you do have the executive summary that I'm looking at right now, but in our, our 30 page distance learning plan, we actually outline synchronous, asynchronous teaching um, with examples of both and some suggestions and many, many lesson plans that teachers can follow so they don't have to create all that. The next group, the grading assessment um, group and also parent engagement. As you know, um, there were so many policy issues that came down um, with COVID as far as grading and testing and all those things, very complicated. So that group pretty much took care of that. And they also were in charge of parent engagement. And you'll see um, a sample of some of the things that we did with that as well. The fourth group was responsible for devices and internet access. So most of our secondary kids already had devices, but we had to give out approximately over 25,000 devices to our elementary and some of our secondary students. Uh, because obviously those devices were at the site. So this team went in, cleaned them up, imaged them, and made sure that um, they got out to students. Huge undertaking. The last group, the high school seniors group, as you know, uh, so many issues around graduation and um, all the other issues with grading. So this group pretty much concentrated on that. So it was a concerted effort from everybody to be able to come up with a distance learning plan. So having said that, I'm going to focus on the scope and sequence group, which is the one that I led. And just to let you know, when, when we look into these scope and sequences and we take a dive in here, you're going to see a lot of resources that are attached to these scope and sequences. But I really want to emphasize that the important part of this is that we wanted to ensure that as much as we can, that our kids had equitable learning experiences across the board, especially our English learners. So these scope and sequences are based on the standards and what's attached to them are links that go to the curriculum that we have purchased, our, our tech, textbooks and options, but also other curriculum that we have purchased or that is absolutely free, because I saw the question that you guys had in the chat. So just to know, we're not throwing a bunch of resources and you know they fall wherever they may. These resources are strategically um, added to these scope and sequences to enhance 
instruction for students. So, because we're focusing on English learners today, I'm going to show you examples of um, different scope and sequences for different placement of English learners. This first scope and sequence is a math scope and sequence um, that would be like a regular EL math classroom. Um, I'm sorry, a regular classroom that has ELs, so a mainstream setting. So, basically, I'm a third grade teacher. I have this scope and sequence that tells me exactly how long it's supposed to take. And these are suggestions, you know, we're not, you know, uh, making sure that people do their sorals. This, these are suggestions. I have exactly what I'm supposed to teach here to the point where I can go in and I can look at once it comes back, which we all know it will, when, when the assessments come back, it shows me exactly the claim and target, um, what it is exactly that students need to know at the different proficiency levels. Sorry, this is going crazy on me. So you can see at the different proficiency levels what the expectation for students would be, which is something you really need to know, obviously, especially when you have ELs, so that you know how to front load them and how to help them. And then it has samples of what the test questions would look like. So this is something that teachers have readily available right in that scope and sequence. Then if we go further down, you have the actual standards here that they're gonna teach, related standards. It tells you that they're expected to apply this standard proficiently. So we know we need to spend some time here. And then here's some vocabulary that's been pulled out um, to help the teachers. Some flashcards with definitions. Um, and the good thing with this is that we have it both in English and Spanish. So if we go into the Spanish section, you can see it'll be the same vocabulary. And this is the vocabulary for this particular unit. And they have games. Here's a timed game. Students could get in and practice. They have to find um, the, the definitions for different things. So. 60 minutos, um, you can, is hora, so you bring it here and it'll disappear. And then that's, can, um, students continue to play with this until the, it's all gone and then they get a, a score for that. So that's just something fun that they can do to um, practice vocabulary. And it's already right here, the teacher doesn't have to go searching for these things. The other thing too that we have, as I mentioned, our curriculum guides are, are um, linked to our programs. And Again, in order to maintain the integrity of the curriculum guide, so there aren't links to all kinds of other things that really don't pertain. Here are some lesson design resources. So teachers don't even have to think that out. They've got um, the anchoring tasks. They have all the different um, instructional um, strategies, essential understanding. Everything is here for them so that they can know exactly how to teach this particular lesson. We also have um, for students, it's attached to the Khan Academy. As you know, that's a, a very valuable resource and they do have it um, in Spanish, not sure about other Talk languages. Talk about the unit understand. of measurement called the gram. And the gram is a unit of measurement for measuring mass. Now, what is mass? Well, you might have seen in everyday language, someone might look at a feather. Let me see if I can draw a good feather. So a feather like this and say, hey, this is not very massive. So you get the idea. The videos obviously are a good visual for the students and um, the kids really seem to like these as well. Uh, down here where it says differentiation support. So that was a task for my group as well. We had to differentiate within initial instruction, which is really what we want. We don't want to be an afterthought. So within initial instruction, we have differentiation for our special education students. And then of course, for our English learners. So uh, when we go into the English learner resources, again, this is a mainstream math class but now I'm a mainstream teacher that has language stems for this particular lesson, which as we know was on time and, and measurement, volume, these things. So these have already built, been built in here with additional vocabulary. And we've also pulled the um, English learner support from the particular unit that teachers are working on. So they have this as well. And this is included in all the math curriculum. So they have the language frames, they have the additional um, bi-level support for English learner students. We also have things like a glossary in here. There are map tools. We know that kids like manipulatives, they like visuals. So we've got things here that teachers can manipulate with whether they're doing, they can do a synchronous lesson using these right in front of the kids. And it's all here. Again, they don't have to go searching for it. So those are just some of the things that we have within the mainstream math class. And we also included this EL support, um, this EL toolkit for our students for math. These are included in all the math units. As you can see, it's what comes with the program and it's actually very good. I'm gonna scroll and I'm sorry, I don't mean to make anybody dizzy or anything, but basically we have um, some of the different strategies defined here. It talks about content objective, language objective, just giving teachers a good background on what are some good effective EL strategies. And here are all the different ones. And 
it tells you for principle one, so it's telling you for which particular lessons these would be applicable. So that's also a great support. So this is an example of a curriculum guide for math that teachers already have the standards and all the all the um, digital links that would help them. I'm going, I'm going to show you one for ELA. This one includes ELD right in here. So basically, I have my English language arts standards with the correlating ELD standards already here for teachers. So they don't have to go searching for this and try to pull out what belongs to that. So that you have here your, your reading literature standard, your ELD standard broken down by proficiency levels. So this gives teachers a good foundation of what they're supposed to be teaching here and how they can help the different levels of our English learners. We have vocabulary uh, right on the curriculum guide here. The, gu the guides are here. The teachers can do, again, uh, different lessons, whether whole group or they can work with um, a smaller group. Here as well. And you can see there are several links to our program. Um, but we also have like the sound spelling cards. There's a video for how to teach phonics. Um, this is first grade, so we know that that's heavy in early literacy. Um, another thing I wanted to share is we do have other resources as well. So right now, we have purchased um, Mayam through Renaissance Learning. And this is just one that teachers can go into very easily. They already have all their information here. And this particular program provides thousands of books, additional books that kids can read. Um, they can take tests on them. As you can see, here's 6,700 and some books in all the different categories here for students to access. So they definitely have all the reading material that they need here. And again, a lot of different activities that they can do with it. So that's just one. Many of you are familiar with Footsteps to Brilliance. Um, we do have a partnership there with the county on that with a lot of um, early literacy and resources for teachers as well. Again, ELD is built into this particular lesson. So we can do a designated ELD lesson with these uh, leveled readers. A teacher can pull a couple of kids that might need further um, designated ELD. And we have the different activities that can be done here. And, and it's already here. And the lesson cards are here as well. So teachers don't have to guess or, or have to create so many things. And then again, additional resources of things that we've already purchased, newcomer cards. So quite a few resources for teachers in here to be able to um, deliver instruction to our English learners. Then I'm going to quickly just glance over this one. This is a biliteracy. It's the exact same thing, but in Spanish. So we use the English and Spanish in our dual immersion classrooms. So you can see it's the same setup, the same thing, but it's in Spanish. All of this is um, for our, again, for our dual classrooms. One thing that I did want to highlight that's pretty cool here is um, these read alouds in Spanish, and this is free. As I said, some, we vetted our program specialists. We have a, a fantastic team of program specialists. See these, all these titles here, you can switch them over to different languages. Let's say really red. You have them both in English and Spanish, and some also have other languages as well. There are like seven or eight languages that these can be changed into. So that's a resource that teachers have again. And then again, on this one, we have Spanish language development for our Spanish learners, for our, our students that are English only, they're learning Spanish. We have all the same um, resources for them as well. So they have all of that and they can do their small group Spanish language um, designated instruction as well. As you can see many, many resources and they're right here at Teachers Fingertips. So another sample that I wanna show now, this is a middle school sample and our middle school teachers, uh, well actually our secondary teachers were a little more versed in Google Classroom. Many of them already had Google Classrooms and, and they were fine with using it and they were very excited to get these resources. So the secondary resources were built right into the Google Classroom. So teachers had their curriculum guides in our learning management system. We took those out and actually built them out into the Google Classroom. So basically here, again, teachers get a very in-depth scope and sequence of what they should be teaching at what, you know, uh, the interval here, the calendar. So let's just say they're going into the heredity because this is the one I presented last time when they were teaching. Um, See the unit at a glance if we go in here it specifically takes you to the to the science standards very specifically tells you exactly what students need to demonstrate again um teacher clarity we know is a huge huge game changer because if they're clear about what kids need to do then they can really help our els even more um so and these are all the, the uh, corresponding standards that are in this particular unit so teachers have this 
to, to go by. They don't have to guess as far as like what we're teaching to the end of the year. And then right here in this particular unit, they have many, many digital resources available to them to help them with this. One of the things that they do have are some great videos that um, are linked here. And again, these are all free. And here's one in particular, Heredity. Another extraordinary advance would be to eliminate inherited diseases before birth. We're already taking the first steps. By fertilizing an egg and producing an eight cell embryo, you can pluck off one of those cells and analyze its genes. Then you can screen that embryo for a host of diseases using a technique called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So you get the idea there. These are interesting videos that teachers have, and they've already been linked to their unit. So it eliminates, again, um, a lot of time that they may not have because they might be teaching their own students um, to go and look. Again, we built in the English learner and special ed resources directly into the initial teaching so that we're not an afterthought and teachers have this available at their fingertips. One of the things that we always have um, are the ELD standards for all the different, um, we, we know we can apply them to different content areas. So they have the full document here, but then they have a correlation, which our program specialists in our department um, were able to develop for this particular unit of heredity. So teachers have that here that they can use. Another thing that they use too that I think is uh, really valuable is all these different units also have PowerPoints, vocabulary PowerPoints that are very helpful. So students, we know that heredity could have some difficult vocabulary. So we have these PowerPoints. You can see these different um, terms that would be difficult for our English learners. And we have visuals. And every unit has these PowerPoints in them to help our students, more comprehensible input. So you get the idea that's always a staple are the vocabulary PowerPoints. Then another resource that we have as well, um, this particular page has many, many different resources for teachers. Uh, many of you are familiar with Colorín Colorado. There are several different articles for teachers information. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to highlight here is we did find this, and these are free. Again, we found these glossaries in these different languages for science. This one in particular is in Farsi. So this is a living environment glossary um, the terminology that was translated into Farsi. So, and there are several of these. So our, again, our program specialists have done an excellent job of finding some of these things, um, and making them available to our teachers. Another thing that, that I didn't know, but I guess um, they found out is that you can add subtitles in different languages to YouTube videos. And this has been very helpful as well. And this is for, this is a mainstream science class. So these teachers really need um, that help to help scaffold instruction for our English learners. And then we have everything from language frames and uh, paragraph frames and other things that teachers can use in this particular um, classroom. So another resource that we have, this is again a mainstream classroom and we also have an ELD classroom sample. And I'm just gonna go quickly through this because I know time is, is uh, running out, but we did set up an ELD classroom in our middle school. One of the things I wanted to share with you was one of the progress monitoring tools that we used. We made it digital. Many of you may already have seen our English language portfolios, um, English language development portfolios. And basically, here's our district timeline for when kids need to reclassify, and we, we monitor kids to make sure they're on target for that. Um, and so all their testing information goes in here. And if they're not on target, then obviously we need to identify that. And here are some suggested interventions that we may use and how we monitor. Many of you use Elevation. We're partners with Elevation. So we were able to get data from them and run reports and send reports home to parents. Here are the standards when the students met them, if they haven't met them and why. So this is a good progress monitoring tool that we're using right now with our, our English learners. So I just wanted to highlight that. And there, as you can see, there are many, many resources here. And these are attached to our um, English language development programs. Again, so, so we know that teachers have access. They don't have to buy anything. This is the curriculum that we've already purchased for them. One thing that I just wanted to quickly highlight um, is this particular video, and I'm sure you guys will, will see the, the familiar person here. We're going to analyze this model and discuss elements, and we're going to mark it up and really discuss each aspect. So let's put our reading guide card under our first pass where it says number one. Our task is to circle the writer's claim 
within the topic sentence. So we're going to read that first sentence and circle the actual claim, the author's opinion about. So many of you know that that's Dr. Kate Kinsella. And so that's a teacher demonstration video, uh, which many of them are embedded in these curriculum guides. Teachers get a, um, an idea of what the instruction should look like when they're um, participating in some of these routines. And as I said, this also has many, many other resources that um, just a lot, a lot to go over. So this is how we provided uh, teachers with resources and a, a real clear picture of instruction from now till the end of the year. And then we also, um, we also are now, my, the program specialists are working on these curriculum guides for all of next year. So when teachers come in, they're gonna have these, they have them in all the content, uh, core content areas at all grade levels, and they will have these um, for next year as well. So the next thing I wanted to share, make sure I'm back in here. Do you have a document that was put in your folder, the English learner distance learning document? And um, I just spoke about the instructional piece, the curricular piece, because that's what my team was tasked with. But as a district, we have done many, many things to support our English learners um, that really were looking at, at what our ed, ed assistants are doing, our program specialists and their office hours and how they continue to coach and what they do to coach. We have um, additional support for our duly identified students, our English learners that are in special ed. So I shared this document with you just to give you some ideas of what it is that um, our district is doing in some of the other areas that it's not necessarily just instruction. And then also just to let you know that we have sent out learning bundles. Some of our parents opted out and didn't want to do distance learning. And as we know that we're obligated to provide a learning experience for students. So we've probably handed out over 15,000 learning bundles. We partnered with teacher created materials and purchased some workbooks for them. And we also had school bundles uh, with, with school supplies sent out as well. So we've been doing that. The last thing I wanted to share with you, we do have um, an English learner resource page on our English learner website, and we have a family, um, a parents page on the district website, but that's for all of our students. So we have a wonderful uh, family engagement page that has all kinds of links that our family engagement department did, but this one is gonna be in particular just for our English learner students. It's in development. Um, as you can see, we're using um, resources for ELD, we're looking at resources for different typologies of ELs, newcomers, LTELs, uh, repairable harm. I know many of you recognize that article, a lot of research articles for teachers. We have other content areas, virtual tours. This is what we're gonna populate. And then for parents, specifically um, English learner issues in English and Spanish, as you can see, there's quite a bit. And for our duly identified students, uh, different information on special education and English learners. And then the last thing I wanted to showcase is we also have a page that we're building out on LPAC support. So these are all the different um, resources and help for teachers to be able to effectively help students um, perform on the LPAC. And that is pretty much all I have. It's been a collaborative effort from everybody. And uh, we're trying just like you guys are, and I'm sure that we'll have some lessons learned and things that we may do differently. But so far, this is um, how we are approaching our distance learning. Thank you so much, Anna. Wonderful, wonderful resources. Um, in the meantime, during our, our transition time, I do want to say that our, our presenters uh, throughout the webinar, they're uh, responding to your questions. We're also going to seek to stay five minutes after the webinar to be able to answer all the questions that came in into the chat. So don't worry, your questions will be answered even if we go you know, five minutes after so that we can answer all your questions. Are we ready with Chafee? We are. All right, take it away. Well, hello everybody. Um, my name is Martin Alvarado. I'm the Director of Categorical Programs for the Chafee Joint Union High School District. Uh, Co-presenting with me, we have uh, Ms. Monica Solis, who is our uh, EL and literacy instructional coach, and also Dr. Marion Segovia, who most recently was a, a teacher and EL advisor, but now she is transitioning to the role of assistant principal. So congratulations to her. But um, I just want to give kudos to the previous presenters. They were amazing and uh, sharing all the, the great resources that we have in supporting our EL learners. Our, uh, what we're going to share today is going to be a little bit different. Uh, we will be sharing 
uh, the process and how we transition to distance learning model from a leadership perspective. I'll also give you a little bit of insight on how that looked uh, at the classroom level and what the instruction looked like and support systems that were in place. Uh, what we're gonna share is also how our systems played a key role in allowing us to transition to the distance learning model um, and to support our EL learners. A little bit of our district, um, we serve um, eight comprehensive high schools and we have an alternative ed center which also uh, houses an online high school as well. And of course we have one adult school. Uh, we serve the cities of Ontario and Montclair and Ranch Cucamonga. And we have approximately over 1100 teachers. Uh, and for that, we have seven instructional coaches uh, to meet the needs of the professional development uh, plan that we have in place in our district. Uh, we serve over 23,000 students. And of those 23,000, we have approximately as of this week, 1,341 uh, EL learners, which is 6%. And of those, uh, 7,083 uh, are RFIPs, and that's about 30%. And which is important to note too, that uh, 308 students uh, of our EL learners also receive special ed education services, which is about 22%. Our vision, um, has been that we will graduate um, students ready for college and careers, and that's all students. Um, and we do this uh, by ensuring that the placement levels are correct uh, in the classroom. And also we, we ensure that they have the technology available for all students in, in our district to be able to uh, access everything that they need to access, not only at school, but at home. And um, well, we're proud to say that 50% of our teachers have been trained uh, in the use of technology at all uh, levels, which was one of the systems in place that allow us to transition, uh, our transition to be as smooth as it could be <laughs> in these times, but uh, that was key. Uh, I'm talking about systems that we had in place. Uh, we have um, an ELD achievement team that is comprised of ELD teachers across the district. We all support class teachers for all the intervention that our EL students uh, receive. Uh, and in some schools, we have EL advisors that oversee the EL programs on their sites. And with that, we have language assessors to ensure that um, our students are being tested correctly and supporting them. Uh, we have an EL advisory that we meet um, consistently, even more so now the once a pandemic hit. And that's comprised of our EL advisors and language assessors. And of course, we have Monica, who's our EL instructional coach, who's been instrumental in all this. And my office oversees uh, the entire EL program, um, along with Monica. And um, I'm happy to say that I'm part of the instruction division. And as we developed our EL, uh, or our distance learning plan, I had to ensure that all the equity pieces were in place, especially for our EL learners. So as we transition to distance learning, uh, we had four phases, which we will touch upon uh, later in the presentation. Of course, there was a preparation and planning that went into it. Uh, and uh, Dr. Segovia will uh, address that. And, and whatnot. Uh, of course, we received the guidance from the CDE and our development of our uh, distance learning plan. Uh, initially, we went into short term implementation, but uh, as we all know that um, that was very brief and we had to immediately transition into a long term distance learning model. So these, uh, these systems allowed us to, to do that and, and we'll share how that um, transpired in a little bit. And now we're in phase 3, which is the full implementation of our district uh, learning plan and. Um, at this point, uh, Monica is going to address how that looked and, and what we did in our transition. So good morning again, I'm Monica Solis and I am one of two uh, EL and literacy instructional coaches. And so as Martin shared, we had over half of our teachers trained and using Chromebooks in the classroom. 
and they had a lot of tech options available to them, which was good. But then in some ways it presented that challenge to us of, okay, as, as we support teachers now in distance learning, what resource can we provide to, to help support everything that they might be able to use depending on what their students need? So what we did in that case is we knew that we wanted to meet teachers where they were in the same way that we were asking them to meet their students where they were. So the EL advisors and I, we got together and we developed this particular list of resources that you see in front of you. And we included that column to help teachers focus on, okay, what is it that you wanna do? Is there a particular language domain that you wanna focus on? And so we organized it in that way. You're looking at the first page right here. There are other pages on it, but with this particular page, we wanted to focus teachers right away on what the district was funding or supporting in some way. And then the other pages have the premium um, platforms and, and applications that yes, right now, a lot of them are offering um, free services during the closure. And so we wanted to make teachers aware of them, but without overwhelming them. And we wanted to call their attention first to what we did have available. And so this resource was then made available to teachers. We put it on our instruction website and then EL advisors made sure to share it out with their sites and we shared it with our teams as well. Something else that we realized we were going to need was digital access to our textbook. And so working with our representative um, over the course of a week, we were able to quickly survey teachers who needed what, what particular level, and make that happen, um, working not only with the textbook rep, but also with our ed tech services staff at the district as well. And then, uh, as Martine shared with you earlier, we already had some strong systems of collaboration and support in place, but of course, with the closure, we knew that we were going to have to shift those as well. And a good example of one of the things that we did for this is with our Read 180 classes. Uh, as you know, uh, Read 180 is a literacy support class. And so it already uses a computer program and software that when the students are in the building using it with the teachers, everything is fine. Now, all of a sudden, when they were accessing it at home on different devices, we had to learn how to troubleshoot remotely what questions to ask them about what they were trying. And so we, we figured out a way to support them. We leveraged some of the publishers support resources as well, and we were able to keep that instruction going. Um, we also found out that we were going to need to access the hours that the program is available since students now might need to be helping their younger siblings. Um, in the morning. And so we went ahead and we adjusted it to include afternoon and evening hours as well. And if you're familiar with Read 180, you know that the assessments, the reading inventory and the phonics inventory are key pieces of data in that program. And so we had a group of teachers come together to have a discussion about it. And we talked about things like, should we give it? How can we do it? Is it okay to, to not give this assessment? So that was a small group of our Read 180 teachers who, who attended. And then as a result of that, we were able to develop this resource right here that we then shared out with the entire Read 180 um, group of teachers. And then something else that we wanted to do, a shift that we thought was important to make was to model some of the flexibility that we were asking teachers to have with students. We wanted to model that with them as well. And so one of the things that we really wanted to be careful of was the number of emails that, that we sent to them. We really wanted to make sure that we limited them, that we included the information that they needed, that we kept them short and, and brief. And then keeping in mind one of those SEL practices, whenever we could embed a video, we could, that way our teachers, our colleagues could hear our voices and see our faces in the same way that we were hoping that they would make videos and many of them did for their own students as well. And then when it came to meetings, we really did our best to, to limit those as well, keep the time limited. And then anytime we could maybe flip the meeting, we would by sending out maybe a video or an email with the information and then making ourselves available either for question and answer sessions or office hours. And so the, the feedback on that, we know that teachers have appreciated that as well. So then 
as we transition now to some of the instruction and, and the support that was happening at the sites, as Martin mentioned earlier, in three phases, we transitioned to a block schedule and that gave our teachers protected time with flexibility. And so they could use it for either synchronous learning or asynchronous learning. Um, and that meant that they had that period of protected time. It really organized things for our students as well. And really many of our EL advisors made themselves available to students even beyond the blocks. They were again, meeting students wherever they were and, and for whatever they needed. And then one of the main things that was essential in all of this was the support that was being provided on site. And that was being provided by our, by our EL advisors, our language assessors, and then all of those ELD achievement team members um, those teachers out there advocating for their students as well. Now, Dr. Segovia is going to share a little bit more about that with you. Okay, I just noticed it is 12 o'clock right now. So what do you want me to do? We're okay to continue, Dr. Segovia. Okay. All right. So at the site, um, I, I've been an EL advisor at Chafee High School. This is the one school within our district, we've got eight comprehensive schools, and this is the one school that has the newcomer program. So we've got a lot of uh, ELs at this site particularly. So as the school closure uh, occurred, um, we kind of went through these, uh, these four um, phases that Martine described. So the first phase, luckily we, we kind of had a sense that something might happen and we were able to collect numbers from all of our students. We needed to be able to contact them directly to give them instructions because teachers were using different uh, ways of, you know, using technology in different ways in different classrooms. So they, they were gonna need, need to know exactly what to do with each teacher. And as that happened during that early phase that Martine described where we thought it was gonna be temporary, we really wanted to prioritize connecting with the students and be mindful of what, what those needs were. We wanted to find out who had technology at home, who did not have technology at home, and then give them instructions about how they can come and get that if they needed it. Um, we, we realized that, you know, like Monica said, some of the kids were now working full time. Some of the kids were now becoming child, uh, doing caretaking for their younger siblings. And there were a lot of stresses in the, in the kids and their families. So we really wanted to understand and be compassionate to our students and what they were also going through. And as a district, district uh, saw that this was gonna continue. We each as teachers developed learning plans for our students. We gave our students baseline grades so that they would know um, that if they had a grade that you know wasn't gonna drop, we were gonna work towards improving their grades and continuing le learning and mastering skills. And, um, and as we went through, the, the priority was always to just keep connect with students and so forth. If we weren't able to connect with students, then students could uh, excuse me, if we weren't able to connect with students, teachers could reach out to counselors, um, to administrators who would help them and support them. We had bilingual staff on hand that were also supporting that effort. At the site level, we wanted to support teachers and amongst ourselves, our own teach achievement team, we've got quite a few ELD teachers and teachers who work with ELs at Chapey High School. And so we regularly would have collaboration meetings. So we continue that best practice um, and, and that collaboration so we could now learn from one another, how do we do this differently with English learners? What are we noticing amongst our students? What are our challenges? And what can we do to, to really help the students? So it was really nice to, to do that. At one of my own experiences was I was um, trying to kind of keep the level of, of work at the same as when it was when we were in session. And I realized, you know, I had to scale back um, what the kids were dealing with. Just it wasn't fair to them um, to expect the same as if they were in the classroom. So we learned as we experienced what 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 would work in the classroom and what would work online. Um, we shared the strategies that Monica shared just a moment ago amongst our staff. Uh, we also developed in the achievement team some essential strategies to support our English learners. So that's the infographic you see on the side. Um, uh, as an EL advisor, I also created a video not only to share strategies with staff, but also to kind of model what are our students need. They need demonstrations. They need to see the teacher's um, presence. Um, 
so that they could understand instructions. The tech coaches were always available to help our teachers on our site. We had bilingual aides who would normally be in an ELD class. They were still helping the teachers with maybe phone calls or being present in the Zoom meetings. And, and again, we did have that bilingual staff, just even if it was to make a phone call to families, we, we were giving our teachers that kind of support. The the kind of support the kids need wasn't just um, you know the the classroom stuff. They they needed help with food. We we've got a community health health education worker at um, Chapey High School, and he's wonderful. He works with one of our other employees on staff, and they have so much love for our students. They they reach out to the community and find resources, and we get food to the kids who need it. And so when that happens, you know, we, we have those lists of students who really need that and they can come to the school and get the, get the help they need. Um, and ongoing throughout, you know, it wasn't just like a one day pickup for the Chromebooks. Those have been made available and the kids know um, if they haven't already picked one up, they can come by the school and pick those up. So we do offer that. And then continuing the support through the closure. And then of course we like so many of, of you, don't know what next year is going to look like, but we do know that a lot of the support that we have in place is going to continue in the same way that it continued even during this closure. Um, so for example, on reclassification during the closure, we focused on that class of 2020 to make sure that those seniors that were able to be reclassified before graduating, we were able to reclassify them. And then for our remaining students, we continued focusing on literacy. So whether that was through the Read 180 class or maybe using Musella, which we do have access to through the district. And now our EL advisors have identified some other free resources for literacy that the students can use over the summer. Every year we have an EL summer bridge where we bring our incoming ninth grade ELs to their respective campuses. They're giving they're given tours, they're able to take classes and, and kind of preload the learning that they're gonna do freshman year. We're happy to say that we are going to continue that this year. It's going to be completely online, but we're excited to see what some of our ASB students are able to put together in terms of maybe virtual tours and, and videos and doing what they can to still make our incoming ELs feel welcome and part of their new communities at their schools. When it comes to placement for next year, we know that we're going to have some gaps in the data, but we're going to utilize what we do have. We were about 80% finished with our LPAC testing when we had to close. And so for some of our students, we'll be able to utilize those scores as we place them in the fall. And then, of course, the monitoring of our students. This is going to be our second year of using elevation. And so we're going to expand what we do with that. And then, of course, our goal is to provide strategic professional development. And so we know that we're gonna to need to address some learning gaps when we return. We wanna make sure that teachers are ready to do that. And then we also wanna strengthen the skills of our teachers. And so we know that some of them have had to learn very quickly how to utilize some of those resources out there. And so now we wanna make sure that we continue strengthening those skills. So I'll let Martine uh, wrap up, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, both of you. Um, you're amazing. Uh, as you could see, a lot of things have to be in place before even learning takes place. And uh, we're in this together, uh, but we wanted to give you a little bit of this perspective of um, the things that this entails. Uh, we're absolutely available. As you could see, there are uh, email addresses and also our Twitter handles. Um, communicate with us. Uh, we will. what we do, but we would also get some ideas from you. Um, thank you, Angelica, for putting this on for everybody. Our county doing amazing things, and um, we're very uh, happy to be part of it. Thank you, Martin and Chafee team. Um, as you can see, you do have questions in the chat, so if you can please go back and, and uh, give some responses. You also got really great comments in terms of how excited they are to see your resources. So thank you again. Um, let's go back to our um, to our presentation. 
And um, like we said earlier, we are going to stay five minutes after to make sure that we re give responses to all of the, the chat questions. But we also want to remind you and we want to invite you, please, please, please go to this bit.ly link and give us feedback. Uh, whatever feedback we receive, we look at it and then we it makes us become better at what we do and offer all of the resources and, pre and future webinars as well. So please give us some feedback. And here is our contact information, um, Angelica Hurtado, as well as Rosemary's um, email. Rosemary, if you would, you want to say anything to them before we go to the chat responses? You know, the feedback link I did put in the chat, so I just have to click it and it's a few questions and the, all the presenters will be looking forward to seeing your responses as well. Okay, so at this time, our webinar um, has ended. We appreciate all of our presenters, applauses, applauses for our presenters, but also we appreciate the collaboration and all of our participants joining us today. So we will stay on for about five minutes until we make sure that we respond to all the chats. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Let's go ahead and make sure that the responses are um, are in there. And, the, and this was the infographic. Sorry, probably Rosemary was probably going to say that about the infographic, about sharing that. I wonder if Chiefy team wouldn't mind um, Monica sharing that infographic that you had put in that slide. It was pretty amazing. Mary It's there. You'll you'll see it's from me. Great. Oh, I missed it. Thank you so much. And also the table, Monica was talking about, people were asking for the table as well. I saw that, which table? I, I shared that one as well. Okay, thanks for that one as well. Yeah, it looks like Dr. Segovia put a Google link in there. Well, you shared the links in the email, yes. Uh, we'll do a post uh, WebEx. We have the recording and usually we do get the recording to you as well if you were participating. Yes, so Maria will take care of that. Thank you, Maria. Yes, everything will be sent to all the emails that who registered. Thank you, Efrain, for joining us today. Gracias, señora Collins, por estar con nosotros. Sonia Tompkins, where can I find the DLEL plan? That, that's also in the drive. Is that San Bernardino cities? I think. Thank you, David. We're here to serve. Adios, Efraín. I missed the bitly. I can do the bit. Caroline. We can, uh, Candy, we can put the bit.ly again. Let's see, here it goes. Hopefully Alfredo Jr. can visit both districts in the future. Chafee team, there's a question for. Sorry, there was a question um, by Kathleen. She asked about EDGE. How is the digital textbook used and disseminated? I wonder if the Chafee team could answer that if she's still here. I answered it and then she followed up and I'm working on that one too. Thanks, Monica. goes so fast it's like oh my goodness who's
I think I got most of them on I don't know if there's any that you see that I still need to answer. You got the ones with the email that we sent you. You know what? I didn't get the email. Oh, no. Make sure. Thank you. Um, Rosemary sends uh, um, the make sure to copy and paste to send it to you via email also. So hopefully went to your iCloud email. Uh, Anna's. You want to resend it, Rosemary, to her yeah. SBC USD. Angelica, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and log off. Thank you so much. Happy uh, school. You guys rock. Good job. You'll be hearing from us again because we really, really want to thank you. So uh, we'll touch base with the preschool team soon. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. It was a lot of fun. We'll see you. Be safe. Talk to you soon. Thank you. And thank you, Latasha. Thank you. Awesome job. Thank you, Alexis. Thanks. No problem. Bye, Alexis.